How's it going? Dave and Comic Book Investments. So I came across this really interesting article. I thought I'd share it with you. So if you're not familiar with uh, PriceCharting.com, they usually do prices for video games, but they did a blog post on boob size in comic books and how it's gone up 300%. Yes, they've increased 300% since, I don't know, probably since like the golden age. And so, very, very interesting stuff. They say modern day comics feature bust size that consume more than triple the cover space and show twice the amount of cleavage compared to, uh, compared to comics from the mid 20th century. So back around 1950, 60, somewhere around there. But that's not all they found. So it, they basically took pixels and saw how all the pixels, hip, race, um, to waist, to bust size, to cup size, to face, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and they showed the cover, the pixels of the cover, so they could determine like how big and how much room they take up on the cover. So what they did was they took uh, prominent female characters, such as Wonder Woman, Catwoman, and Red Sonja, and they did 88 covers of Wonder Woman, 35 of Catwoman, and then 59 of Red Sonja. <clears throat> and then they have some graphs here that show the different things. Um, they, they go on to say the decade beginning in 2010 was the most prominent decade for breasts as nearly 30% of the cover width was occupied by them. Now, I'll go into that in a little bit. If you've seen, seen my previous video, uh, it will explain kind of why that is. Um, so let's look at down here some graphs and stuff. Uh, this will give you a better understanding of what's going on. Basically, the percentage of the cover that are, are boobs. That's basically what this first top graph up here is, um, this one in the top left. And basically what that means is if you have a cover, you know, and you have characters on it, how much of that cover space basically is dedicated to the boobs. And the percentage and how much that has increased over time. So if you look way back here in the 1950s, uh, it's around 10% or so. And then as time goes on, you can see it gets more and more with sometimes it covering 50% of the cover, which seems, I don't know how it could cover 50%. That's, that's a lot. That's like, <laughs> but anyways, so the percentage of the cover almost up here, these dots at the very top right, you can see 57, but it looks at around 30%. And then you look at cover a percentage of the cleavage that's shown, as you can see from the 1950s on, it's slowly gone up, meaning more cleavage, which I'll explain why in a second. But if you look at hip to waist ratio, that's actually gone down. So over time, basically, um, their hips have either gotten bigger um, or their waist has gotten bigger or something in between, but that's gone down. And then breast to waist ratio is basically the same. If anything, it's slightly gone down a little bit, meaning that back in the day, female characters had a skinnier waist versus how big their boobs were. Um, here's a couple things to note. Bust occupies more than triple the cover space today as compared to back in the day. Uh, the amount of cleavage showed has more than doubled. Uh, cleavage of greater than 50% was not observed until the 1970s, which it after that point it became relatively common. So they're saying that cleavage was not observed until, greater than 50% was not observed until the 19, uh, after the 1970s. Women actually did fill out in the waist over time. Hip to ratio declined 15%. Breast ratio has remained the same as breasts have grown, so has waists. So basically they're not getting like super skinny and bigger, you know, more hourglass type of thing. Um, but again, additionally, we'd love to run a study on body, male body dimensions over time. Yes, I mean, they, everyone always talks about the female, you know, drawings and on comics, but it's like, dude, look at the males. Like, no one looks like, no average man looks like Superman. And then you could go, okay, he's a superhero. Well, what about Batman? No one looks like Batman. Like, it'd be extremely hard. Sure, there's a few bodybuilders, but that's not your average. Like, every male character is just like, I remember reading an article where it's like, their bicep size is like 
23 or 25 inches, which is like insane. Like maybe the top biggest bodybuilders have something that size. So it's just so unrealistic of, you know, what they have for the males, just like the females. And that to me is fine because it's comics. So I have a few issues with this um, and a few reasons why things have changed. So if you watched my video before, it was on the Comics Code Authority and why that came to be. If you're not familiar with the Comics Code, it's this little thing that says approved by the comics. And this ran from 19, basically about 1954, all the way until the 2000s. And in 2001, Marvel got rid of it. And then in 2011, DC got rid of theirs, which then in turn, the Comics Code basically is saying that you cannot make women unrealistic looking but as time went on through like the 70s and 80s and 90s and stuff like that they got a little looser with their guidelines so things started to change so that's why back in the day the percentage of covers of breasts and cleavage shown was so small and as you can see up in this top left graph you can see all these points you know everywhere way more right around the 2000s if you're looking at the 2000s you know right in here all of a sudden, it's just, you know, it seems like it skyrockets. That's because comic publishers started getting rid of the code and not paying attention to them anymore. That is why something like that would change. But the thing is, if you go before the comic code existed, so before 1954, you have someone like the Phantom Lady. I mean, look at her waist to boob ratio, right? It's ridiculous, you know. And here's another picture of her. So look at all that, like, look at all this. Look at all this cleavage and everything. She barely wore anything. Um, she had like a little thing on. And this was actually used, <laughs> the, the, the psychiatrist used this in order to make the Comics Code Authority or basically get comics banned. If you haven't checked out my video, you got to watch it. It's very interesting. I'll put a link somewhere, but watch it. But yeah, I mean, look, look at this. Come on. Um, this, this is in the 1940s and 50s. Um, things were a lot different back then. They're more like how they are now. But then as time went on, you have, you know, from Battle Chasers, uh, uh, Red Monica. This is from 1998. Now, as you can see on there, there's no comics code because during the 90s, new even in the 80s, new publishers were coming out and they're like, F the comic code. We don't really care. And the whole reason the comic code existed was for like advertisers and to make things more kid friendly and all this kind of stuff. And that's why everything looked very bland and the drawings weren't very good. Like even like Wonder Woman up until, you know, when you hit like the comic code, she started everything just didn't look as good. Our artists weren't able to express themselves very well. It was very like vanilla type stuff. I mean, so look at her. I mean, look at her bus size to hip ratio and all that kind of stuff. And so if you look at like Xantana, like look here, it's like, okay, that looks more realistic. That's because look, the commas code up in that top right under, you know, issue number 11, you can see that commas code. So women were more drawn relatively normal, not because the artist wanted to, or not because that's what people wanted, is because this comics code wouldn't allow it. Wouldn't allow it. So then in, you know, then you got here. Look, this is 2015. So this comics code doesn't exist anymore. And what it all comes down to is you can look at different covers around the same era, same time frame, and it's like, okay, this one, she's a little more not as busty as in this one. But it comes down to, this one is by David Finch. It comes down to what the artist wants to draw and how the artist really wants to portray their characters and how they draw them. Relatively the same time, but see the comics code like kind of forbid that and made everything, made artists not be able to really express themselves and how they wanted to. So that's what basically it comes down to is different artists express themselves differently how they want. You can see through the years, they picked out a few of them. But I mean, look at like 1977 right here, Red Sonia at the bottom. I mean, her bust size is pretty much the same as it is in this 2015. And then it looks even, smaller in 2008 and smaller in 2005 so 2000 or 1977 looks like probably the biggest even compared to 2022 and you can look at catwoman and i would say her biggest is probably in between 1993 
or 2005 because it's 2020 not very big 2004 not very big so it really comes down to how the artist wants to draw like if you look at something like a Bruce Tim you know his art is going to be vastly different um, compared to other artists because that's how he draws his characters so I mean it just really comes down to the artist but back in the day the artists could draw however they wanted and it wasn't until the comics code came around that they're forced to draw kind of eh, you know, not very good I mean you can see the difference here in this red skull like this is how the original one on the left was but then the comics code came around and they said oh the red skull is too scary so when they reprinted this Captain America comics later like in the 70s or something they had to change the red skull it was too scary and that's the kind of stuff that happens or right here this is the Captain America's this and you can see the difference the original drawing was this one on the right but they sent it to the code and like he's too scary so they toned him down for the you know this Captain America 101 but the, by the time this is the later 70s they were a little more lenient and they allowed the original cover to be drawn which makes Red Skull look like this on the right a little more ghoulish looking uh, it's the same reason why um, Tomb of Dracula and Werewolf by Night, like why didn't we have werewolves in, in Dracula before uh, 1971 or 72 when they came out? The comics code wouldn't allow that and then they complained. Uh, Marvel Comics, DC Comics finally complained and they, okay fine you can have werewolves and uh, zombies and vampires. You couldn't before. You weren't allowed when the cop comics code came out. So that comes back to you know how women are drawn and you know I'm perfectly fine with it however, however the artist wants to express themselves I don't really care I don't I don't like it when people get all upset about it because it's the artist that's their desire to draw them this way and people buy them or people don't buy them and let's be honest sex sells and usually you know this the bigger the boobs usually more sales probably I don't know exactly but that's what I'm assuming and I mean, I just hate when people complain because I uh, complain about the women drawn. I'm like, look at the guys. I mean, look at, let's see, let's see uh, Jim Lee's Batman. Um, and it's like, yeah, I don't think guys normally look this big. Look, his arm is as big as his head. Like, look at my arm compared to my head. Like, not even close. Like, look how huge he is and ripped. Could not, like... Look at that. His bicep is bigger than his head. I mean, it's, it's he's massive. Nothing wrong with it. I like looking at him like this. Um, I wouldn't want to see a stick-looking Batman or a normal man-sized Batman. Not at all. That would be Robert Patterson, and I didn't like him as much. So, um, but yeah, I found that interesting. Let me know what you think.